What's up, everyone? I'm Tatum. Welcome to another episode of Tatum Takes. It's a very special one, though, because I was sitting around uh, thinking of, you know, new episodes and new topics and things of that nature. And it fucked me up because I realized I haven't done anything on, like, any women yet in, like, none of my videos. So I thought that was, like, you know, kind of disgraceful in a way. <laughs> uh, so I was figuring, like, what can I do? I could do it off the wall on a couple. But I was like, what should be the first thing I do? And, you know, God works in mysterious ways. Uh, this artist's debut album is turning 10 this weekend. So, I wanted to, I'm going to call it a revisit. That's what we'll call it. A Tatum take, but quote unquote revisit. I'm going to talk about Nicki Minaj's debut album, Pink Friday. Now, I haven't listened to this album prior to re-listening to it. I haven't listened to this album probably since it came out. Besides the singles, you know. But thoroughly listened to it since it came out. And... Listen back to it. First of all, first of all, before I get into this, let me just say, like, me personally, I think Nicki Minaj is the greatest female rapper we ever seen in hip hop, music, anything, period. Like, I don't think it's a female rapper that raps better than her. I just figured it out. You know what I mean? Like, up until that point, I give Kim her credit for what Kim does. I give Foxy her credit for what Foxy done. Eve, Trina, uh, Queen Latifah, Moni Love, Lauren Hill. I give all of them their credit for what they gave to the culture and what they elevated in the culture. But I think Nicki Minaj was the first one who really balled all that shit up. And, like, it always takes the, the what do I always say? Like, the kid is always the one who not outshines the parent, but, like, basically, yes, your parents crawl for you to walk. And I think that's the case with Nicki Minaj and you know, like, the little Kims and things of that nature, I think, like, they crawl so she could walk and run and fly and everything else, like, as well as she's doing for the newer people, the Megans, the the Cardis, the City Girls, the all these people that come after Nicki Minaj that you see, you could tell they got the image from Nicki Minaj. Uh, but, okay, I say that to say, when I went back and listened to the album, I was like, oh, shit. This shit is a classic. <laughs> like, I was listening to it, and I was like, oh, shit. This shit is actually a fucking classic rap album. And I like uh, I like the Pink Print. I think that's my favorite Nicki Minaj album. Uh, I just like when rappers get personal. Uh, yeah, it, it's, I like when rappers get personal and they step just outside of their superhero self. And I think the Pink Print was that in a way. I mean, she had her singles on there. But I feel like that album... You really saw who she was. So that's my favorite Nicki Minaj album. So if I'm going to listen to Nicki Minaj, I'll go to something from that album before I go to something from this prior. But going back to it, let's just start with it. Uh, I'm the best. I think that song was dope. It, it remind me, one thing this album remind me of is 2010 and how music sound. Like it was like that, it was that weird poppy Will I Am, Alex the Kid kind of sound. Like, so when the that first beat came on, I was like, oh shit, this is, I, I forgot about this time and sound. Like, it's so close, but it's yet so far. Uh, and then Roman Revenge came on, and then that Swiss Beats beat, and I just love when rappers talking that shit. And I love how Nicki Minaj finally got fed up, but like Little Kim, and she was like, you fucking has been. Like, she just started spazzing on her, like, completely. Like, I had enough. Like, leave me alone. Like, I was trying to be gracious. I love you, but you fucking keep picking on me, and I got to do this. I love when rappers just talk that shit. Eminem verses were cool. Now I look back on him, and like, eh, some stuff. I'm just like, eh. Did it on him. I forgot that was on there. Right through me. I, I forgot that was on there. Fly. Save me. I, I forgot that song was on there. I was like, that's probably one of my favorites. Moment for Life. I just forgot about these records and how impactful they were at the time and how they still are and how they're probably some of her best songs in her catalog. Your Love was on here. And uh, what's the... It was a bonus track. Super Bass. Super Bass was on this album. Like, those songs crafted her uh, her career. Like, those songs really shaped her. And going back and listening to it, and I was listening to Your Love, I just forgot how... You know how when a new artist comes along and the first time they make that, like you listen to them, their mixtapes or whatever, and you just see the potential, right? But you hear the first time they make the first hit record, 
like and you're like oh that's kind of you finally did it like we were waiting for this moment for you to hit that like moment you made your hit record to go to radio and now you could you know become the rap superstar and listening to your love i was like oh this is like cute because she's never like that moment has so gone and passed that like i don't think she can make that type of song no more and we feel it the way that we felt and i was like saying your love is fucking uh when it hurts so bad but it's like <laughs> it's like when you hear it it's oh shit like i forgot all about this like it it, it kind of warms your heart in a way because it reminds you of that time when you was, that's like her first hit like that was the first one on her own that we all was like oh yes that's a Nicki Minaj song we love everyone i don't i can't really find a person who doesn't like that song moment for life bro like that beat is still fucking dope i think just her telling her story on this album is pretty dope also. Like, uh, Dear Old Nikki, where she writes a letter to her old self, which is weird because she just came out maybe like 07, 08, but she writes a letter to herself like, you know, I thank you for where you got me kind of in a way, and I don't want to lose the stuff that you I had because it got me to this point, and that was the stuff that you were the person that Wayne saw, and it's kind of like... I never seen an artist actually do that, especially on their first album, like knowing that like, uh, yeah, this is the last time before uh, I, I'm just out of here. Like I'm never going to be like the old Nikki. And it's kind of crazy that she wrote that that early in her career. Like you you can expect that now. You know what I mean? Maybe she'll do a part two to that in a way. But also I remember, listen to it, I remember that uh, it was a documentary that came on uh, MTV at the time, by the time, around the time she was releasing this. And she was uh, discussing, like, you know, when a man's a boss, we look at it as, like, dope. And, you know, just we congratulate it. But when a woman's bossing up, we call her bitchy. Like, she's hard to work with kind of things. That nature when actuality, she just wants the same respect as the guys get. And she just want her, she just want to be heard in kind of way. So I was thinking about all this while listening to this album. And even thinking about the pink hair Nicki Minaj. <laughs> like, just, just that early new kid on the scene kind of thing it, it, it kind of you know it warmed my heart a bit let's get into my favorite songs uh i'm gonna go with moment for life uh save me you save me that song's fucking amazing and your love worst song i'm gonna say what is it called check it out with will i am you remember when <laughs> they was performing at it so far it was just like behind them on stage doing <laughs> like <laughs> Uh, yeah, that song's ass, though. But that's the thing. Like, you could tell it's good that she... This is going to sound weird because I love hip-hop. But it's great that she tests those waters on her first album. So when she does... What was the song on her second album that was, like, huge? Uh, Starships. Like, it made it easier for us to digest. Even though, you know, her core probably didn't like Starships. But it was easier for us that, to digest that because she, she took those kind of steps and leaps on like musical choices on the first album like check out check it out uh fly there was another one on here too i can't think of it but those two for sure like very poppy driven sounding that okay i can see what you're going for and it just reminds me of that time again and do you remember how crazy did it on him was i'm sorry i probably been giving like my words but do you remember how crazy did it on him was <laughs> like that song was like i just forgot how crazy that song was like at the time that it came out like that song was fucking huge. And to think she had did it on him. Uh I think Fly was with Rihanna was a single, but Moment for Life, uh Your Love. She had like hits on this album in Super Bass. It had like four hits on this album, like on her debut. You gotta clap it up for her for that, man. Favorite line, uh, I'll probably take it from Moment for Life where she said, This night just reminds me of everything they deprived me of. Every time I hit it, I'll be like, well, Yeah, 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 I get it. In this very moment, I'm king. In this very moment, I slay Goliath with a sling. This very moment, I. In recap, though, um, I'm kind of mad at myself that. You know, I took so long to even do one of these, but I'm kind of mad at myself that it took me so long to go back to this album. I feel like sometimes with female with the female rappers which is you know this is our fault as just males and hip-hop consumers itself it's like we don't go back to those we don't go back to those females albums as much as we go back to our blueprints and get riches and eminems and rock rock hymns and snoop Dogg's doctor we don't go back to the those albums as much as we should like the Queen Latifahs, the MC Lights, uh the Nicki Minaj's, the Little Kim's, the Foxy Browns, the Eves uh, 
the Jean Grays. We don't go back to these albums as much as we should to just to keep them up there. Like we we make it seem like female rappers don't have these classic albums. Like they're just single artists or good for videos or things of that nature. But we got to talk about these albums because. I don't know. We just can't, like, let that shit perish under us. You know what I mean? And we can't congratulate fucking Biggie and not congratulate Little Kemp. Like, it's, like, it's unfair. Uh, so I'm glad I did it today. Uh, I'm glad that this album made it to 10 years because there's a lot of albums that came out in 2010 that I won't talk about. <laughs> but I'm glad this album made it to 10 years. I'm glad it held up 10 years later uh, from the re-listen, the revisit. Uh yeah, it just made me appreciate Nicki Minaj a little bit more. Not that I didn't, like, because I'm a huge Nicki fan, but it just made me appreciate her more. Like, oh, shit, I just, you just forget sometimes. Uh, you just forget. So it was just great to go back and enjoy it for the moment and, you know, fall, re-fall in love with some songs. Like, I forgot about Save Me, and I listened to it, and I was like, oh, shit, this is a really dope fucking record. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, what do you think? Do you think this is Nicki Minaj's best album? Uh, let me know in the comments. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Yeah, let's talk about it. Other than that, though, I'm Tatum. That's my take. I'm out.